Well, we have a very uh, prestigious panel here, as you can see, and I'd like to introduce you to these very special people. We uh, have Jason Calder, Shani Prasad, uh, whom you all know of GAPC, um, and Malcolm Hall. And we're going to be talking to you today about the Future Generations gradual, Graduate School. It's a master's degree program, and Jason Calder will be enlightening you and telling you a lot more about what this program is all about. So to you, gentlemen, to lady and gentlemen, welcome to Caribbean Spotlight. And, Thank you, um, Jason, I first want to ask you, how did you become involved with the Future Generations uh, Graduate um, School? And... Um, what is your role uh, with this organization? Sure, sure. Well, I'm on the faculty of the Future Generations Graduate School. I also direct some of our research initiatives. But I joined Future Generations from the Carter Center, where I worked mm -hmm. for about 16 years. And it was through the Carter Center that I developed an uh, enduring association with Guyana over many years. And so as I joined uh, uh, Future Generations, um, we were talking about different ways in which we can have uh, impact through this uh, master's degree program in applied community change and conservation. Mm -hmm. And it led to the idea of recruiting s several students from Guyana. And that's why I'm here in New York this week with the students and with our partners in GABPC um, to introduce these students and introduce future generations to the Guyanese diaspora community here. Mm, wonderful. And Shani is certainly uh, a stalwart uh, in really coordinating some wonderful community events and getting the Guyanese diaspora here uh, together. And she always says, you know, uh, to me when she sends me the emails, Tanuji, you're always so busy. The media is never there, but that's not quite true. And she and I always have a take on it. But uh, Shani, maybe you can enlighten our viewers about your involvement uh, with this program here. If they can hear me, because I'm trying my best to talk. I um, don't want to get laryngitis, but Tanuji, thank you for having us in the program. Um, it's important to the students. Um, the Guyanese American Business and Professional Council, of which I'm the executive director for, I wanted to say that because I don't think most people know what GABPC is. Fair enough. Um, is an organization that's located in Richmond Hill, New York. Um, we have two offices, one in Van Wyck and one in Jamaica Avenue. And our involvement with the with Jason Calder and Future Generations as a whole, he will get into, I, I suppose, later how all the, how the relationship started. But I, I should stress. The purpose of the Guyanese American Business and Professional Council is really to create linkages between Guyanese and Americans here at home and abroad. As the professional aspect of it, this is certainly an example Indeed. of those linkages that we talk about all mm -hmm. the time. How do we bring Guyanese Bridging and Americans the gap, together? Right. And the diaspora is such, a, such an amazing part it of is. this program, mm -hmm. I believe, mm -hmm. um, because we as, as Guyanese came to America, we choose to live here. And we know the work that diaspora is doing back home, even though they're here. And there's so much more to be done. Um, you do not have to be home. That's the amazing thing about this program. You do not have to be home to contribute to Guyana's development. Right. These students that are part of the program are doing a wonderful job for us. And I think my task here today is to say, as a partner with Future Generations, as a GMEPC partnership with, G with the Future Generations and the Future Generation Graduate School, really is to emphasize that we can only achieve things through partnership and, and that's where the diaspora comes in with the students. We want partnership and so my job here is really not so much anything but to appeal to the diaspora to say that we're looking for moral support, we're looking for mentoring, advisors, um, they need help with their residentials which Jason will get into and I'm sure your the students will get into eventually about what the residentials is about. Um, I wanted to thank the Future Generations and the Future Generation mm. Graduate School mm. for providing the scholarship for the students. It's a great experience for them. I know what it's like. I'm a community person, as Tanucha Point pointed out, um, even though I knock her down on the media, but I think she's always there. And I think, true Tanucha, I wanted to say thank you for uh, allowing this platform to the students, to Future Generation, to myself as GABPC, and Malcolm Hall from the Guyana Cultural Association. I don't want to spend a lot of time um, talking over the program because the students are going to come on and say about this. Mm -hmm. Well, I wanted to just stay appeal to you to say we can do so much for Guyana. This is just the start. And thank you for everything that you have done for Guyana. And I will ask you to really, tr to us, 
looking for future generations and Tanuja and Malcolm to support the students. You know how to contact me. Tanuja will have those information, but the information for future generations will be on the, on the board. Um, we're willing to partner with you however you want to do it to support the kids. So um, through our numbers and our website, you can contact us. Absolutely. Um, but getting back to Jason's role mm -hmm. and uh, what Future Generations uh, Graduate School is all about, um, I'd like you to uh, really tell our viewers what this master's degree program is sure. all about. How are the students going to be impacted, um, their experiences in, in learning and uh, being part of this program? Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. will they be able to make a significant contribution to Guyana? Sure, sure. No, thank you for the opportunity to do this. Um, the Future Generations Graduate School uh, offers a two-year master's degree in what we call Applied Community Change and Conservation. So it's a very broad community development and social change degree, mm -hmm. exposing students through coursework to theory and practice in a range of issues from health to conflict resolution to income generation mm -hmm. to sustainability, empowerment, leadership. It's both looking at skills as well as scholarship. But the key unique thing about this mm -hmm. is that too often with your bricks and mortar type of graduate school, uh, you've got to take people out of their communities mm -hmm. and out of their countries for two years to do their studies and hope that they may go back to their home countries and contribute back to their communities. But as we all know, part of going abroad for an education often for people starts that process of leaving and not going back. Right. And so what we're trying to do, and this is not just Guyana, this is all around the, the developing world. Mm -hmm. The program has uh, three main components for the students, and that is their coursework, which is done uh, mostly online through what we call interactive online learning. Uh, a given class may have 15 to 20 students from around the world, each in their own country, and the faculty, which is globally based as well, mm -hmm. and the students and the faculty interact online through their coursework. So that's the first key component. The second component are what we call residentials. This is where the students get to visit other countries. Mm. Uh, so we do a month in India. Which, which your students just came back from. Just recently completed. Right. They'll do a month in the United States, okay. a month in Peru, and a month in Nepal and Tibet. And during these residentials, they will continue the coursework uh, and engage now face-to-face, peer-to-peer with their fellow students and the faculty. Mm -hmm. They will also visit world-class demonstration sites of what they're learning. So when they're taking a community health class at the beginning of the, uh, in the first semester, mm -hmm. they get to visit places like the Jamked Comprehensive Rural Health Project in India, mm -hmm. which has been in existence for 40 years and has been written up in all of the, the top flight health journals as an example of sustainable community-based primary health care. The third component of the program is their practicum in which they do either a research or a project-oriented activity mm -hmm. uh, during the course of the two years where they are using what they have learned from the residentials in their coursework and applying it with faculty supervision in their, in their communities. In other words, applying the tools of the trade as such.